Hello everyone! My name is Anastasia and this is my channel about cross-stitch. Uh, in this video I will be talking about my whips, my two new finishes and maybe some of my plans for the rest of the June. So today is like the 14th of June, so just a weekly update I guess, like two weekly update. <laughs> for the last what i've been doing for the last two weeks but first of all i just wanted to share bits of my life update because this last past two weeks were kind of difficult for me and they weren't like work difficult or something like that they were emotionally difficult and because of that i wasn't in a right state of mind to just sit every day and stitch i still did my obligatory like lunchtime stitching. I'm calling it obligatory because otherwise if I'm not stitching during lunch, I will be just looking in the wall for hours, like two, two hours maybe, like while the kids sleep. So that's why I'm kind of hmm, taking the projects with me to work and stitching, even though I'm like really not sometimes in the mood, <laughs> but in the evenings, I try to um, just spend them maybe outside my home because just sitting in the box sometimes stresses me even more. Like, I don't know, for the right stitchy um, mind, for the right stitchy uh, situation, I need to be relaxed. I need to be um, not stressed by stuff. Like, I mean, I can have some work problems or stuff going on and while I'm stitching I'm thinking it all over I'm dealing with stuff but these just two weeks were too much too much for me to handle so yeah um first of all of course it's the thing that's going on in the world and everyone everyone is talking about it it's all 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 the social medias on all the TVs and YouTube is just full of it even when I'm watching like my favorite floss tubers or something, everyone is talking about it. Of course, I get affected and yes, I'm saying black lives matter and most of all, all lives matter. Cause you know guys, while I've been living in China for the last four years, I really saw lots of cases of racism, but it's not racism against black people. Yes, there is, but not so much as the racism against the fellow Asian people. And I'm talking right now about Chinese uh, discriminating like Filipinians, Thai people, Vietnamese or Mongolian people, the Asian, Asians, their fellows, <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> so um, words are difficult. And uh, I just wanted to share with you uh, that by working in a linguistic center for three years, I often saw these kinds of discriminations against like other Asians. And this is, at first, this was like so enraging and overwhelming for me. Like, why, why? Um, I'm, I will just explain the situation is, uh, sometimes the in our linguistic center there would be other Asian teachers teaching English there and some of them would have the best English I've ever heard in my life like there would be no accent at all or it would be like pure American speech I mean um, she would be Mongolian but she would be talking faster and better and her vocabulary choice would be so wide I mean compared to her I'm an amateur so uh, there would be teachers like that and some and they would be also speaking Chinese which I'm not so it's like double win <laughs> double win right like she's speaking English and she's speaking Chinese and uh, it's very good opportunity for the kids who don't know a word in English and sometimes kids can be too stubborn to just start something new out of the blue you know um 
especially like older kids, like the new, the young ones, super young ones. You just play flashcards with them. They start speaking Chinese. You like show them that you don't understand or you start speaking English. And as a game, they will repeat with you and they will start learning the words and they will remember stuff because it's easy. But for example, when the kid is 8, 10, 12, 14 years old, sometimes there is a like psychological barrier when they don't want to learn new things. So they would be like, I would be just showing the same flashcard and like maybe color or um, fruit or something. And I'm like, watermelon. And he would be like, no, I don't understand. And he will be speaking Chinese. I'm like, no, 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 just say watermelon. And he'll be like, no, I don't understand. Watermelon, no, I don't understand. And he'll be like uh, starting to cry or something because it's stressful. And he's just blocking himself from learning, from understanding. And it's not a bad thing. I mean, yeah, it's a problem for me as a teacher, but it, I do understand that some kids are like that. So I can't blame them for that. And for in this case, the teacher who can speak Chinese and English is more preferable. And sometimes our Chinese staff would transfer the student to another teacher who would be like speaking Chinese, explaining stuff to him. He would be like more opening and the kids would love the Asian teacher, would love her or him. They would spend wonderful time. Of course, the process of learning this way when you have to translate from your native language into English is slower because like you don't, um, develop the intuitional speaking. You don't develop this uh, just understanding of the language. You just get the grammar, you get the vocabularies, you cram it together and you intentionally try to build the sentences. So it's way more difficult, but just some kids, they are not open enough to learn um, the way I'm teaching them. So but then the mom or dad would show up and for example the mom would be totally fine with this teacher but then the dad would show up and for the dad it would be like the first time seeing the teacher so he was like oh no we want to transfer teacher right now uh from this moment um i want that one white girl or that white boy like but the kid is loving that teacher he is making so much progress like in a month he learned so much he's like reading and writing right now it's it's not good to change teachers so fast especially like when the uh, period of uh, acclimatization uh, was so harsh for him and no no i just want another teacher and then i talked to uh, my chinese co-workers and they said just because of the looks just because of the looks the parent wouldn't want an asian teacher so yeah uh, racism is not uh racism is everywhere it's in it's international it's in every country in all the ways um so yeah i fully support the movements um just recently it's been kind of hard to post anything to be on social medias and stuff like that because well, you know when one thing is going uh, there is also more and more and more going on. It's not like always just one bad thing happening. It's always like lots of stuff happening at the same time. So apart from the job difficulties and um, the world going crazy and stuff like that, my life, there was something happening in my life that really, really disturbed me a lot and I couldn't feel mentally able to stitch, to communicate. Uh, I don't think I talk to my friends a lot or I talk to anyone else. Like I have groups of teachers I'm talking to regularly. I don't think I even texted any of them for quite a while. Maybe just one friend uh, who is like right here in Beijing and she knows the situation, but like other people I wasn't able to talk to or mm, no no so and I know when a youtuber is mentioning that something is happening in the life and then he's like but I'm not gonna tell you it's frustrating it's like 
what why why would you even mention that something is going on and then you shut up but i will tell you when i am ready because <laughs> right now if i will be like just vocalizing stuff just saying it out loud it would kind of put me in a depression state or uh, my mood would put be way down i may even start crying i mean i'm in a, that state right now so and i'm a very ugly crier <laughs> like when i start crying my eyes go red i get blotches my nose just amplifies in the size like 20 times or something so you don't want to see that so i'm just saying that it wasn't easy for me to stitch lately because and that's why you will see a little less progress as usual because just something going on maybe after some time i will be able to say it out loud and uh, maybe even seek some help <laughs> but not right now not i'm not ready yet so um work was wonderful i mean um yeah let, let's keep it positive right let's keep it positive so work was wonderful uh, the kids were very sweet um i think the main problem right now is that it's very 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 hot like if you go outside for maybe an hour you may get burnt crisp red and stuff like every time we go out we just put sunscreen on us so it's it's been crazy but because of work we have to go out like two times a day in the morning and in the afternoon for an hour and you know it, it's not like i would let the kids run and would stay in the shade and uh, save myself <laughs> save my soul but it was like i have to run with them or they're riding bike and i have to keep them safe so i will be running after the bike and uh, all the way and uh, if they want to play in the sandbox i have to sit under the direct sun with them in the sandbox and play and build castles and if they want to go on slides i would uh, try to keep them safe and uh, catch every time they slide and um, just run everywhere and play games and stuff like that so it's been very active two hours under the sun each day so by the end of the day mostly i will be like drained and i would come home and like uh, like someone would ask me like uh, do you want to go for dinner or uh, like meet me at the subway i'm like no 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 i want shower 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 <laughs> and then i just spend like 30 40 minutes in the shower because i just need that <laughs> yeah so the work was pleasant but not easy and uh, oh and i've been talking so much again as always so let's go to my whips and the th first thing i staged this week was um uh, the wreath by the company Fruzilog. It's a Ukrainian company and I'm stitching this on a piece of wood. And I'm just happy to say that this is how much I did of backstage and I totally love it. So the beetle is not backstage yet. So it's kind of ruining the picture. But basically from this side up to like the sunflower all types of backstitch are done like there is a black backstitch in one thread which you can see here it's very small and black backstitch in two threads so yeah it's it's really giving it the dimension it's giving it the picture and i'm really loving how it looks uh, the beetle was kind of drag <laughs> to stitch because this week I've been working on the craning in the beetle. Mm, yeah, the camera can't catch it. Like, I probably need um, my lamp to shine. I'm, I'm uh, making a video under the street light, <laughs> outside light, window light. So, 
it's not showing up but i've put in cranix in the beetle Ooh, that was harsh because <laughs> i can't say i'm loving cranix i was saying that if i ever stitch a mirabilia i would stitch it totally in floss no cranix no beads because bead isn't my thing too like i can put in one or two beads to emphasize the piece like to put some additional embellishments but i would not be able to just stitch with beds for a long time it just kills me so the wreath was going wonderfully and i think i will be trying to finish like all this upper set like i'm already starting some of the backstage on top so i think it would go pretty quickly if i focus on it and i mean i have done the one half in two weeks so why not to do a second half in two weeks and just finish it right like i can't just drag it with me <laughs> at all times since it's going so well and uh, it really is the name is fall wreath but it really is summer and spring for me. Like my mom was like, yeah, it's it's a fall stitch. It, it's so beautiful. I'm like, no, just look, look at these bright greens and yellows and even these oranges. They're not like dark brown oranges. They are super bright. They're like neon bright. <laughs> and this whole thing, it's just like, the abundance of colors maybe it's because i stitched it in color completing so i like took all the yellows i completed all the yellows then i took all the greens i completed all the greens then like all the browns that were the last and they were like so little browns so i haven't even noticed them like actual browns only live nuts and uh, in the sunflowers mm. uh, this is like the dark dark burnt orange so I don't know but for me it just represents these colors and the mood which i was stitching in i started in april like i had a month of starts in april and i started it and i've been stitching april may june by now just what is the mood outside with all the color uh, flowers blooming and all the greens this is the perfect stitch for this time so <laughs> for the rest of the world, it will be a fall stitch, fall wreath. For me, it will be spring and summer. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just loving it. it. It really gives me joy, real joy. Like whenever I'm working on the colors, whenever I'm stitching, even back stitching around certain elements, like the leaves and everything, I'm just seeing how they come into life like this big giant leaf when i'm stitching it i'm thinking more about like big leaves in the jungles big leaves like uh in the lotus fields or something like that so it's never like falling leaves or it's never like dying leaves it's abundance of colors <laughs> so I'm proud about how much I managed to finish, especially with the beetle. I think I spent only whole day stitching the only beetle. Like I used like maybe these long threads of crating because they were fraying so much and it was difficult to work with them a lot. So I had to I had to change the thread a lot and it wasn't easy to do it so no more complaining <laughs> just happy stitching um one more project i've been working on um uh, and uh, it was a new start um uh, is a little dragon it's a um, onigiri dragon uh which i'm stitching as a modal stitch for one of the Russian designers. I will put her name here. Um, I know like 
I can pronounce all the Russian names, but people want to still hear them, <laughs> like, won't understand. So this is I'm stitching on a piece of 32 count, which I dyed myself, and oh, I'm so in love how the modeling on this fabric is looking. And yeah, that's like the majority of the dragon. He will have some filling on, on the wing and the like the butt and he will be holding a nigiri and I'm, I'm pretty sure there is some stitching on his head more. But that's mostly it. <laughs> it's a very, very small dragon. Tiny. I think the main thing about being tiny is that it was 32 count when I dyed it, but now it's kind of like more 36 or is there a 34 count, I wonder? Because it seems like way smaller than it should be. And I'm fine with stitching on smaller counts, but at first when I started and my stitches looked so bulky, like I'm stitching in two threads and I'm stitching it in Chinese threads. They are fluffier than DMC. They're DMC colors, but they are fluffier and thicker. So when I tried like two threads over two, it was very bulky and my stitches were all looking so bad. Like they were, they didn't just line up correctly. So I kind of thought about doing it one over two. Uh, I think it would look the same, but it is a modal stitch and it has lots of blends. Like I think at least four or five blends in this little bit, tiny, whiny <sighs> dragon, <laughs> baby dragon. So I didn't just feel right to change the pattern in any way to do the modal stitching. So I had to leave it like that. And by the time I was like thinking of restarting it and everything, I was just loving the fabric. <laughs> I was like, oh, I really want to see it on this fabric because you just see how much it pops up, right? You see how much you can see this yellow on purple. And I love it. I love how it actually looks. I, I don't like how uh, the stitches look, but I was ironing it a little bit before. So now the stitches are a little better, a little better. So one more thing uh, that was kind of difficult is that I don't think I dyed this fabric correctly. So every time I'm working in this fabric and uh, occasionally my hands would get sweaty or just um, sticky or something like not because of anything, just because of the body fat, right? So it dyes my hands. My hand would be like purplish. So occasionally I just have to stand up, go wash up my hands, dry them very, very um, totally, and then continue working on it. I was scared of it um, dyeing my flaws while I'm stitching, but Thanks God, it didn't happen. I think cause I don't touch my floss that much while I'm stitching. I'm like holding the hoop with one hand and I'm holding the needle. So I don't touch the floss. So I guess the floss is uh, dry anyway. So it's not dying, just my hands, which I'm holding. So of course the moments they are purple i have to wash them again so that next floss i'm touching or like threading through in the needle or something is not affected at all because yeah the colors are yellow i don't want them to be affected in any way so this been a dragon um you can actually see it already you can see this little head and little arm and a leg and the tail and the wing so i think it's the designer did a very good job because i think there are only like four colors here and maybe two um blends but you already can see the shadings very well and the colors i mean if i would be stitching it on bigger count it would be 
nicer and uh, you can see it more but still even on this tiny account and on tiny floss you can already see how like you can actually see his leg um, apart from the tail or apart from the body or the wing and so on so yeah like i'm just loving it um it brings me joy it brings me joy it's a little bit difficult because of the small count but at the same time i'm thankful that it's so small so i think i have only like i've put here around thousand stitches so yeah just thousand stitches and it's almost done i think i have another 500 maybe and then it's just only backstage so i don't know if i'm gonna finish it maybe maybe by the end of the month i can also finish it because i've been thinking what i'm gonna do uh, till the end of the month and i'm kind of turning to the idea of finishing most of my projects like going on whips uh, especially the ones that only have like one or two days of stitching left so maybe maybe i'm not promising anything but maybe next week next time not today, next week in two weeks next time you will see some finishes also so i don't know it's either new starts or new finishes <laughs> i just can't do the video of my whips <laughs> yeah and the third whip i've been stitching you know um be it being difficult times i just need rotation i just need something new so i would put like 500 stitches here uh, or i will stitch one day on it and come to a good stopping point or something and i will just switch the project and uh, new colors new uh, fabrics new tension it just give me change and it makes me focus more on the project like you know when i am stitching sometimes you remember the signs you remember the everything so it's basically becomes monotone stitching i can't do it right now just not good for my mental state so i need constant change i need action i need to do something i need to be allowed i need to talk i need to go places just because this is what doesn't let me sink into depression <laughs> that's the thing so the third project i have been working on was the summertime by Mireshka. i don't know what's wrong with me but i just keep closing my face today and so it's summertime of Mireshka and uh, the last time you saw it i had almost the full poppy done and i started this one so this time i worked more on this poppy i believe it grew uh, from here up to here and i worked more on the bird because uh, i'm stitching it on a 16 count ada uh, it's hand dyed um like in a beautiful sky mode <laughs> but i'm not ashamed to say to admit that somewhere in the beginning maybe here i made a mistake and i'm not even sure where and what and when but some of my stitches got just got higher maybe one or two rows <laughs> and then when i was stitching like all of this it was already like higher and then I recounted for all of this and while I'm stitching I'm finding more and more places that just don't go right I mean in total like they would look awesome it's not that I'm stitching like the petals or the bird absolutely differently just some places it would a couple of stitches higher so i would have some empty space which i will fill in with another color or i would just 
put them lower by myself even though on the chart it actually shows me higher so but it was a nice struggle it was a nice thing to do because uh, i think when i was stitching it at first i was like oh there was a mistake i already stitched a whole big block here so i don't want to frog it it's fine it's the problem for tomorrow's anastasia and now i'm i'm really wanting to go back and give a slap <laughs> to the yesterday anastasia who was like didn't at least find the mistake at least find and uh, correct all the rest like you know i could leave the mistake but i could like remember like to to count not from this maybe point but from this i don't know like at least i should have found the mistake in the first place and by now it's so much more in stitches that i'm not sure i can even find what's wrong anymore where where my life went wrong <laughs> so i actually loved it and uh, i was kind of kind of tired of only stitching red because i've been stitching red here and here and then i came all the way here i've been kind of tired and then i had a yellow color like in the poppy so i was like mm. and the same yellow goes in the bird so i was like why don't i just move my hoop because i'm stitching in small hoops uh, and do some bird like i mean yellow colors are happy colors and of course there was a mistake of course <laughs> but at the moment i thought maybe there is no mistake in the bird so it won't be that difficult <laughs> but of course there is but at least like um i think i did a little more than a thousand stitches here over the last two weeks and it's growing uh this project i don't think i will finish in june and pray probably it will be coming out again in august but i will try to put at least another thousand stitches in it so for just to get some love and progress and you know like not to just leave it because it is a pleasant thing to stitch um all the colors even the grays and blues they are very nice and they are happy colors and i need it right now and while I was stitching it, I un I kind of understood something that I love stitching green colors. Like, it doesn't matter if it's a swamp uh, dark or like a bright neon green or yellow green blend or something. I just love greens. They, they are my colors. I have so little green in my life, mostly blue, like even my clothes. I have a lot of blue clothes and uh, lots of blue accessories and everything but i really like stitching green this is the real color that i'm enjoying like every stitch just brings me joy just like eye candy so this is my summertime of course it will be like this maybe <laughs> so with um, lots of sky but i mean oh sorry just dangling threads yeah when i come to some point where i will have some stitches of the same color up there and they don't fit in my hoop i just let them drag <laughs> so by the time i will move my hoop i will have this threads in place so yeah while i'm focusing on this part i think i will try to fill in more of the bird and uh, focus on this part now because i just want to see the whole row i know there is a bird bird on top and there are the green um seed boxes i believe and there is also a little ladybug there and some bugs but i mean like right now most of this row is done so if i would fill in these seed boxes which are mostly the same colors i mean that would be just nice to have the whole half of it and considering it's at least half 
most of them, like maybe 60% in high, maybe it will finish like up here and there will have a nice chunk of just pure sky on top. So yeah, I would just love to see how it will fill in. So maybe I will work on that. And now we are going to my finishes. <laughs> Finally, right? Uh, if you're still with me, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you for lasting so long. Um, first of all, I am proud to present to you my pillow. It's very pleasant to touch. I don't know, there is something in the thing that you can feel stuff is really my thing. Like, I really like just getting my hands in the sand and filling it or in the like bag of rice and filling it. So I fill this pillow with rice. So every time I'm touching it or squishing, it's like rice. It's like rice, yeah, but it's kind of like relaxing. So I think, um, so first of all, this is the uh, projects I've been stitching um, for a long time. So first of all, this is the Cup of Peonies by Svetla Mai, SP Stitch. And uh, it was a free sale, I believe, like two years ago. <laughs> So if you would stitch this cup, you automatically get a free another cup. I think right now you can buy those cups or like sometimes she gets a sales on the clothes patterns where you can buy cups. And, and right now I believe there are four in the series. But at first this one was free, like for the sale participants. So I stitched this one like two years ago. <laughs> and this one I stitched recently. It was one of my May mania starts. Sania mania. <sighs> so many <laughs> names. <laughs> mania starts. So and comparing those two, I don't know how well no you cannot see. But I can actually in real life I can see that they are a little different. Like my stitches over two years became more even, more, um, the tension was better. It just looks way prettier, way nicer than the other one. And at first I was thinking about doing um, two cups, maybe a flat fold or pillow, it doesn't matter, but I was thinking about two cups and in between I was thinking about doing I cross stitch so I don't kill people because I don't know I just like the phrase and it's something about me about the my craft about my passion so I just wanted to put it there like this was the original idea to stitch, it, to stitch those two cups side by side and put some phrase but when it actually came to stitching the phrase I didn't like uh, how it would look with those two cups. I don't know, I just didn't have the feel maybe of it, uh, like with the cups of flowers. And last video I was asking like for a phrase or something like that. And uh, after that, I was Googling and Googling and Googling phrases about plants, phrases about gardening, phrases about like learning. And her phrases about books, like, and uh, I believe it was in the section of learning or teaching. So, um, I don't think you can read this phrase, but I will say I read it for you. I'm not a teacher, but an awakener, and I really loved how it sounds because. Most of the time, I'm not really teaching kids phonics or grammar or stuff, but I am building up an interest in them for the language. I'm just showing them that it's not difficult, it's not 
scary like math or like uh, there are other school studies the language is a way to communication and it's a way to find friends to learn about wonderful things in different places and other countries and other people so this was my goal for for the last five six seven years of my life uh, so because sometimes the kids come to learn from in my class or something and they don't need grammar they already have grammar classes at school or even in kindergartens they have grammar and reading classes and they mostly come to me for being entertained for getting that nice english experience like they don't want to sit and just fill in the books but they want to play with me they want to uh, do the riddles or games of course it's all in english that's the learning process they are actually using the language this is what makes um this is what i'm working on i'm working on the kids to use as much language in everyday life or at least with me as they can because i don't understand chinese and it was actually helpful that i haven't learned any because now the kids have to have to uh, speak english with me at all times and even in my kindergarten the kids would understand that i'm not speaking chinese and they would come to me and speak english with me uh, like just an example i had this girl she is like almost two and a half so she's like two two and a half she's so tiny and at first she didn't speak any english she was like totally plain and but i interacted with her we sing songs we play games we do crafts and everything and she was so tiny and cute that um i spent a lot of time with her because other kids are bigger and she was in a big group like other kids would be five and six and she was like almost three so of course i would spend more time with her like helping her with crafts or even helping her to dress up or put away her sleeping stuff or put away the toys mm. other kids can do it like by themselves of course i would supervise and uh, talk to them and play with them but she would require more attention and by the time like several months passed like i think three months passed she was running for me not another chinese teacher for help and she would talk to me and i wouldn't understand what she wants um, then I would ask another teacher, he would tell me and I would go and help her. Yeah, it would be a <laughs> complicated process, but she would run for me for help because she wanted to interact with me. And uh, she would understand that I don't speak in Chinese, so she would need to speak English. And even like her games would be starting to be in English. She would come with me dressed as a doctor. I have this cute picture. I'm just loving it one time it was lunchtime and she came to me dressed as a doctor and i was like no um her name is meow meow like cat meow meow it's time to sleep go to sleep go get dressed go to sleep it's my lunchtime i have to eat i can't play with you and she's like no 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 play with me she's speaking chinese so she says meow meow doctor meow meow doctor and i'm like okay you can be doctor you can listen to my heart listen to my breath i'm gonna eat okay she's like okay so she would be like emma blah, 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 like breathe or not breathe. i'm like oh, oh, oh. and she would use the stethoscope to measure my breath yeah she would measure my breath from the back but it didn't really matter like for the kid anything she could measure my breath through my hand it doesn't matter so uh, and she would be like taking a notebook like they have little notebooks with prescriptions and stuff so she would take a chalk and just write something the kid way and she's like Anna no no Anna bad Anna bad I was like meow meow I'm gonna die what are you saying am I sick am I gonna die 
and you know sometimes there are moments when you never know if the kid really understands what he's saying or it's just like a coincidence that it actually gives this reaction or something but it's so hilarious so the moment i was like trying to act and like play with her and like oh no meow meow and i so bad is it sick am i gonna die and she's like yes i just burst out laughing because sometimes it's so hilarious and yeah i love working with kids because <laughs> they're so funny it's it just brings me joy and so but she really started learning and started using english in her games even just words just some simple words we're not talking about sentences or anything but she understands she's using words and it's like after only three months of being in an english oriented class kindergarten class so it's not like we would have special classes where we would sit and learn or anything. No, we just sing songs. We do some rhymes and uh, uh, tongue twisters and stuff like that. But we don't learn like phonics and vocabularies. I don't give them a list of words to remember or something like that. But she already tried using it on her own. That was what I was talking about. That teaching is not always about just cramming information in the kids heads it's just about waking up the interest in your subject so when i saw this phrase i just thought him yes yes i believe this is a phrase by john wolf so it's not the thing i ever thought but i used um um I used uh, the lettering I found on the internet, I guess a freak one, and my only hole these two past weeks was the uh, iPad program, iPad app, where I can chart <laughs> cross stitch. <laughs> I just charted the words and I put them together and I really love how it looks. And the backing. Um, I was kind of surprised that this time I chose this muted colors, like I wanted something brownish, even for the words, even for the words. At first I thought I would be like orange or white or red, so bright, like I like to. But the moment I needed a floss, I went to my floss stash and I was going through and I just saw this very muted, very like brownish orange color and I was like hmm I really want to work with it I don't know how it will look on my fabric and I think you can still see it it's not very vivid but you can still see how hmm, you can still read the words so uh, I just wanted to work with it and when I yesterday yeah yesterday I was FFRing so yesterday I was putting the fabrics together I had some bright, I had some dark fabrics, kind of like darker than this gray. I had some white with flowers and stuff. And I found this very, very muted, very... Um, very ordinary, I would say, uh, fabric. It's still nice. It's kind of like uh, dusty pink, I would say. It, it's more pink. Um, then it's showing and with it I just put together this brownish um, it has a little dusty pink in the leaves so they kind of go well together so and I was like hmm it makes it very comfortable and relaxing uh, feel to it and plus the insides are very squishy <laughs> Um, I added some uh, of this. It's uh, it's actually a pack which you can put in your wardrobe or clothes, so they will smell nice. Uh, it's from Mini Soul. They're kind of cheap, so I bought a whole bunch of them. 
and uh, I just cut it open and filled and put it in here too and now it smells so nice uh, it's not flower smell it's kind of like soothing calming plant or like wooden smell inside they are like oh dried pieces of plant or it's not granulas it's dried pieces of uh, I would say plant or wood or something like they are natural organic so it says jungle walk so you can assume like it smells like a walk in the jungle and so it's smelly it's squishy and how do I use it is that when I am sitting at the table at my laptop and I'm using the mouse um, my hand is a little bit like that like not exactly like that but you mean uh, I mean when I'm using the mouse it, it gets this part higher and if I put it on the pillow so it's on the same level so my wrist get tired less after the prolonged time of using the laptop so this is the pillow this is my first finish and yes i finally finished it after two years the idea came in my mind the idea of two cups and the words together this was the idea and i counted as a whip up till now now it's finished i'm ecstatic <laughs> that it's already finished not the way like i'm super happy how it turned out yeah i am but not this is not what makes me happy what makes me happy is that it's finally done yay <laughs> uh, and another finish and fully finished object is this one and this was a brooch by panna oh kind of like pim which you have to stitch um i think like long stitch um, and then FFO. Like last video, I showed the contents of the my kit. So it had all the flaws. It had the cardboard circle, uh, which you have to put mount the brush on. It had felt. It had the pin um, thingy <laughs> that closes. So it had everything. And. Um, I was very wrong saying that there are no good instructions about how to stitch it. It's not, I'm still thinking that it could be better, especially for people who have never done long stitch or haven't, um, for like first time doing projects like that. But for kind of person who already kind of familiar with those, they were like, use thread number one two and three for the water and you just put them at random use uh, colors four five six for the trees and you can just like see four five like six uh, use colors like seven eight for the sky like use colors nine ten for the house so it was kind of there was thing like that but still you like you put them at random <laughs> so i am happy to present to you my new brooch so this is how it turned out so i did very carefully the water and the house and the sky um with one strand of floss at a time in my needle so i wanted some dimensions and i wanted the trees to be thicker because it's a forest it's surrounding this house it should be like for me it's a little hot in the woods um very secluded and where you can hide from all the rest of the world so when i was stitching i was thinking thoughts like that so, uh, and I wanted the woods to be very thick 
and no one can penetrate them and you're super secure and you're super alone and the woods would go for miles and miles and miles at the time so this is how i wanted it to look and i'm happy to say i managed like um i bet you can see like the uh, water and the house are a little thinner and the woods are just popping up <laughs> and i didn't add any inside like fuzziness so sometimes they say you can add the fuzziness to add the uh, bigger dimension no i made mine like super even super thin but still they do pop up so yeah very nice right and i actually made a video of how i'm assembling it and it was my first time making a video like that so i think it would look better on my fan than on the sofa <laughs> Oh no. Oh no no. So I think the problem about that video was that I was f filming how I'm making the brush, not like my hands and the brush from the side of my head, something like that. So it's basically 2 hours of me just sitting there and watching floss tube and just stitching but you can't really see the stitching because i'm like sitting like that but anyway i took those two hour video and i shortened it up up to five minutes five minutes with me so if you're up to just meditating under beautiful music and you're interested how the process of and making things like that is going on then i will put uh, the video in the very end of this long video <laughs> it's just like under five minutes under five minutes the only problem was that okay going back to the brush is that the only problem was that when i did the cording they said the cording you have to make from the same floss um as you're stitching so when i did the cording it was too thin too small to even cover all of the side so i did one mm, cording i don't know if you can see here but i did one cording then i did the second cording and actually when the video finished i was looking at my back and I didn't like how the back was looking so I used mm, I have this it's a cord so I used very dark blue cording and I just put another one here just to close up some of the stitches because I think I cut out a felt piece of felt right according to the piece of cardboard but it should have been bigger um, I think because when you mount the stitching on the cardboard it's already a little bigger and then if you put the felt exactly it won't close like the border of the uh, fabric like here it was all white and even on the video when I put the first carton I'm showing like there was still white here inside now it's like you can see it's all blues so it's properly closed but before mm, here <laughs> like before it wasn't nice it wasn't like the finished piece so the instructions go for one cording i did two and then the third one to close and what i thought for myself like in the future if I'm ever going to do project like this like I mean they still have lots of brooches uh, in the series and I even believe there are more because it's been like what 
couple of years since this was uh, already mm, in sale. So I believe they even have more. Like they have mountains, they have lakes, they have deers, they have everything beautiful. And even if I would do something my own, like maybe not something like this big, like this is a huge one, but some, something smaller um, and maybe like anime related or uh, just fun stuff. So I think that I would use maybe like this cording or I would do a cording from a very, very thick floss so it would cover the whole thing all together and I won't need to do it again and again and again and again because I did not like the cording from just the stitch of floss. It was very thin. Like at first I even used two strands, like you use two strands, you make a loop with another two strands, you roll them, you let them go, it's a cord. So it was like actually four strands in a cord. It was very small. Then I tried three strands with, uh, for one side, three strands for another side, make a loop uh, and roll them. They were still small. So flo like stitchy floss does not give that dimension. Like even this cord is thicker than that one. So I would probably use something like this. And this is like, uh, uh, actually bought it in uh, uh, Thailand. It says made in China <laughs> because why not, right? Going to Thailand to buy something made in China. Um, it's like a very fluffy cord and I actually had to like, uh, while I was stitching it, I had to trim it a little bit so it wouldn't be that fluffy, but I still have lots of other colors, so why not? And so I already talked a little bit about my plans for the rest of the June uh, that I'm probably gonna finish at least a try to finish the wreath. Maybe I will finish or at least work much on the dragon. I think I will try to go for a finish because it's tiny. I just can't like, I don't see myself showing you in two weeks time a dragon and like oh but there is only like 100 back stitches left well, why haven't you done it <laughs> right so um i think it's very little left so i think i can manage it and maybe i can go back to my mania starts and because they were small like there is a white body there is a, a wild violet uh, cross stitch freebie so maybe one of them too, at least not like, at least not finish it, but work on it so a lot. So um, I will have something to show because I've been looking for some sales and something to do. And um, uh, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado world, whom I sincerely love. I love her energy. I love her videos. All her projects are beautiful and amazing. And she actually commented on my video the moment I, uh, I saw her comment and that she subscribed. I was like, ah! <laughs> squeaking like that. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, I actually, I really appreciate and love when other floss tubers whom I watch, whom I love, they mention me or they uh, subscribe or they comment. It's like such delight. For example, like last week, it was Lady and Lord of Stitchshire, uh, whom I watch. A like I found them a month ago uh, during my Stitch Mania and started watching them, and I think I just like. I didn't post much in Instagram. I think I had only three posts in the last three weeks, two weeks, but I try to keep uh, everyday posts in uh, stories cause just to show that I'm alive, <laughs> I'm here, I'm stitching. So I'm just like taking a peek at the moment what I'm stitching right now. And sometimes I'm watching something. So I mentioned those people like, 
just so you know like it's always very pleasant to know that someone is watching you because you are making those videos to show the world so of course it's kind of like a diary but I would I, I also really really love telling people like I liked your video it was amazing and I'm, I was teaching while watching it so sometimes I when I'm watching someone and when I'm stitching I take a picture or uh, like a shot of uh, uh, the process and when I'm posting on Instagram I always mention the person and uh, the Lord and Lady of Seashire and Lady uh, commented on my story and she said that she's actually watching me and I was squeaking. I was so happy. I think I lost all my words. Like she was so gracious and understanding, and I was like, I'm just smile. I just can't stop smiling because you commented. And I'm like, and then I reread what we write to each other. Like I just seem so stupid <laughs> because I, it was all overwhelming at the moment. And I didn't want to take time to think what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, because this is a girl in a Colorado world, she commented that uh, there will be a Christmas in July or Jolly July Sal. And I was like, hmm, yeah, yeah, I should do that because I have some Christmas projects. Uh, not like Christmas, Christmas, but I have some. Um, the heritage winter ship um, there is so much snow it's definitely a Christmas project like there is no Christmas tree there but it could be a morning in the fields the Christmas morning like there are people are sleeping in their houses and the sheep are already out why not right I mean I just have to make a connection <laughs> to the theme so I have that one it's only like half of it done so I think why not focus on it and it's I think it would be easier for me to do Christmas stitching during the July because it will be hot my stitching will be coming me down then in December when everything is gray and there is snow I don't want to stitch anything winter related I want to stitch bright colors which would brighten my mood and uh, don't let me think about the grays outside so i think about focusing the july on the christmas and the winter i also have this book which i got from my friend and uh, exactly this project like the, i have this book for this project so why not just starting it right like put a couple of hundred stitches in it or something so, and also I have some smalls, which are winter related, like, so I was thinking about focusing in July on winter thing. So then in June, I can kind of finish up, like lessen the amount of weeks I have at least, at least some small ones. So these are my stitcher plans. So if you, like the video me rambling and talking non-stop just give me a huge like uh, of course you are always welcome to uh, leave me a comment and uh, ask me anything i will try to answer as much as i can like i'm also so happy about any comments and uh, if you have any um questions about the designs or uh, where to buy them or anything I would go and find them for you so yeah just ask and uh, don't forget to subscribe and um, there will be a short uh, video about how I was assembling my um, brush